Good morning to all. I wanted to do this video since two weeks ago. I was consulting with someone and I informed them that their, their personality type made them most likely to fail at losing weight. And I had this individual email me back about a day later and say, Joe, I have to know what you meant by I am most likely to succeed or fail on OMAD. And I explained that he was most likely to fail and he had the most to lose. And uh, I thought this would be a good time to do a video on this. So who is most likely to succeed and who is most likely to fail on OMAD? Disclaimer here. It is, if I conclude, if I mention you and you feel like what I'm describing describes you as most likely to fail, that does not mean that you are doomed to failure. Anyone of any communication type can succeed the same way people who are naturally not angry can get angry. So please do not assume that I'm typecasting anyone. Uh, the point of profiles is that they help people understand themselves. And if you followed this channel for any length of time, you know that th this is all about self-mastery. OMAD, weight loss, bettering yourself, breaking addictions, that's all about self-mastery something about which I know. So that's why you're, you're watching this video. So don't get discouraged. Second of all, if you want more than I'm offering here, this is just the beginning of the rabbit hole. It gets way deeper than what I'm about to give. This coffee is strong this morning, man. Uh, you need to reach out to me. I have what is called an elite consulting program, and that's what this, what I'm going to draw from today. I'm going to give some examples of elite consulting. This is where I get inside your head. I do this with uh, business partners as well, people who want to know themselves better. And over the course of four to five hours, I debrief them with the results of, of the graph. Um, and Debbie Omad is one. She's taken my program, as well as others who are online uh, and making their presence known to the world. But this is more than you will ever know about yourself if you decide that you are a candidate for this course. If you want to understand why you have struggled, why you are the way you are, you will know yourself on a way that is just ridiculously detailed. And so we're going to begin. We're going to go f from number one, which is the most likely to fail, down to number five, which is the least likely to fail. And uh, I think that makes the most sense. Who is most likely to fail on OMAD? Number one, feminists. Uh, back in the days when this channel had haters, I have a few haters and occasionally I get an email that is negative. I tend not to pay attention to it and I, I don't mention it very often. Uh, but that's rare these days. When the channel started, when OMAD was less popular five years ago, uh, I did get a little bit more then because I had people like feminists and they were always the ones to leave a snide comment on a video or to send me a hate mail, some sort of hate mail. One of the ones I got that was most funny was, um, you are the white brainchild patriarchy abomination. I, I should read the email. It's hilarious. But my point is, I don't want to marginalize or criticize anyone here. Uh, if you describe yourself as a feminist, I don't care. But feminists, and I'm talking about the Kool-Aid hair, tongue ring, nose ring, obese, white, pale skin, Seattle occupant type, is they're the least likely to succeed by far. In fact, I don't know of a single one who ever succeeded. And the reason is this applies to uh, males too, who also happen to be far left. And the reason I say far left is because far left communicators tend to be sads. And sad, a sad communicator is someone who's their own victim. They are seeking validation. So whether men or women, they, they get up and they're their own victim. They start the day with a little rain cloud over their head and they feel like, oh God, the world is such a cruel place. Look at how many wars we have. And so these are the type that end up being vegan. They end up being anti-fur. They end up being anti-war, extreme Antifa activist types who they get so enraged because they are the victims and they feel like they have no choice but to fight back. And right now, up in the north, uh, Seattle, we have all of this, this, this outlandish backlash where the civil rights movement has been hijacked by commutards, uh, far leftists who are so left that they're not, they're not actually, they're making things far worse. And so this uh, 
Chaz, if you've been following the news, Chaz Zone in Seattle, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone before it was taken down, was uh, the, five black people ended up getting killed, which was ironic because what started this was the protests of over one black guy getting killed. Uh, extremes meet. So you have all of this feminine energy that is out of control. And feminine energy out of control is always deadly. Mark that down. Feminine energy out of control is always deadly. And that's why these ladies with degrees in gender studies and um, equality degree, they end up not only not being productive citizens, not having useful jobs, all they do is go into Target or Walmart and they start yelling at people they don't know for not wearing a mask. And that's why you see all these videos on Karens and it's an angry lady just yelling at somebody in what seems to be like a postmenopausal rage. And it's crazy. But what you're seeing is a feminized society that has gone too far. Now, masculine energy is not that way. Masculine energy dies on its own if it's left untapped. So you have the stages of masculine energy. You have determinism or determination, and then you have anger, and then you have apathy. And when anger goes to apathy, without a connecting feminine energy, the masculine energy just dies. But it is initially self-sustaining. And so you have uh, masculine energy by itself dies, feminine energy by itself destroys. Because it is the opposite of the initiating masculine energy. Put it this way, for those of you who play chess, you have the first move on a chessboard is white, followed by black. That's one move. That's not one, two, that's one. And then you have white, black, that's move number two. And then white, black, that's move number three. So white is nothing without black and black without white. Again, it's a question of balance. So when you have all of these crazies up north who are saying, it's a summer of love, we want no rules, they're saying stupid stuff like defund the police, which even if you're a liberal, and I mean a dyed-in-the-wool liberal, you don't say defund the police because that's stupid and self-destructive. And yet the, the people who are nuts like this, and we're not talking just women, we're talking about 22-year-old uh, college guys who have been taught, told they need to go to a safe space at college and uh, the, all of this stuff is crazy. They didn't used to do that. But the reason it's crazy is because it's feminine energy gone too far. So apply that here. A feminist well, or with any liberal, any sad communicator, once you give a rule, their brain starts, the inner child comes out and starts trying to circumvent that rule. So what is OMAD? OMAD is pick a time to eat, eat once a day, either one plate or, or calorie counted, whichever you find desirable. Uh, after the meal, no calories. Those are restrictions. And that offends the inner child. So these, the feminist mentality is to take the, the, the worksheet and color outside the lines. Your teacher says, color this pretty picture of a seashell. And the feminist type says, oh, I'm going to color all over the, the page because a line is restrictive. A border, a wall is restrictive. And therefore, that's abominable. So you get these types and what they say is when they're faced with hunger, they say, well, my body needs it. They say, well, I... I feel in a dark and depressed place when I start to fast, so I can't fast. And as a result, none of them make any lasting self-improvements. And that's why all of the blue states right now are in complete turmoil. And you have all of these activist groups and outrage mobs that no one can silence because that's feminine energy run amok. So feminists, that's the first category. To include male feminists, but mainly female feminists. Number two, um, typical housewives who tend to also be sad communicators but there, the reasoning here is the opposite, and I'm going to explain. Uh, a typical housewife is submissive, so they have what is called a low economic score. Now, in my elite consulting, I have a graph, and this graph has dimensions of your personality on it. One is an economic. The economic graph says, what's in it for me? Uh, the higher your economic score, the more you say, what's in it for me? You won't do something unless there's something in it for you to do. So if you don't get something out of the deal, you're not going to do it. That's a high economic. A person with very low economic will do something because others want to do it. So that's in contrast to another value on the graph called altruistic or sacrificial on the new, the new versions. And if you have a high sacrificial and a low economic, you're a, you're a pushover. You'll do anything anyone asks you to. Case in point, a year ago or two years ago, I had a woman who came to me because she couldn't stay on her OMAD meal. And I tried to give her advice, and it, it didn't work. And I said, I recommended her this program. So what she did is she took the program. She had an economic of three and an altruistic of 97. 
to so without understanding it all, it goes from one to 99. Someone like me, who's about a 98 on the economic score versus someone who's a three. And what she, what she ended up, she was an older woman. So she was taught by her, you know, church group, her leanings, that uh, a woman should serve a man. And therefore her opinion doesn't matter. She grew up and when she was eight years old, again, we're going the reverse of the feminist here. We're going the, uh, you know, more or less misogynism. We're going, uh, women are less important. Women are, women are less valuable. And uh, she grew up at church and Bible class and was taught that women should stay quiet and just be helpers at home and make babies. She grew up with that. And by the time she wanted to lose weight, now that she was a pear-shaped woman, she started having trouble. And she said, well, I have to cook for my husband and I get tempted. I have to eat. So we ended up getting her husband on the call and um, we set up guidelines about when she's going to eat. So he was on the same page. And basically, she needed him to sign off on it. <laughs> she needed his approval. This, this is crazy. She needed his approval to say that this was okay, which was a problem. And I said, you, you're going to have to support her. She ended up, I guess, doing okay for a while. But you see the point there. People who need approval, that's why I told you on this channel, I can't give you approval. You have to decide something, but if you're if you don't have that in you to succeed, if you to to de decide, if you don't have enough in you raw anger to succeed, then you can't succeed, because that's where you get your energy from. That's the masculine energy. We've got to do this. That's the get done energy. If you have too little, it's going to be really hard. You're going to have to get that energy from somewhere else, which is it's going to be a chore. So sad communicators, the first two types. Number three, also a sad communicator, analytical males, scared communicators. Now, you are either taking, attracting, responding, or perceiving. Mad, glad, sad, or scared. I'm going to post my links to the older videos on this. And one of those is a video I did three years ago about why scared communicators can't lose weight. Now, the scared communicator, unlike the sad seeking validation, the scared is seeking information. They're constant, their brain is constantly active, so they're chasing rabbits. They're constantly going out and looking for to piece together the wild puzzle that is their consciousness. And as a result, they don't, they usually don't sleep well. They struggle because their brain is active. So what happens? They start on OMAD, but then a week later, they start reading about the benefits of a keto diet. And then they stop doing OMAD and they start doing keto. And then they crash and burn inevitably because they think that food is the answer. Food is never the answer. Control is the answer. It doesn't matter what you're eating. And then the next week that they learn that they try raw veganism and they go on a crazy cleanse that gets messes up their hormones. But they say, OK, I'm going to start over this time. And each time they're losing ground and they're losing resolve because they have a track record, a huge freaking track record of failure to draw on. But it's a repeating cycle. And I have another video coming on the infinite regress. It's a different topic. What we can learn from the infinite regress. But these are the IT people. These are the analytical people that chase rabbits. They're the people you, you your company calls when the printer breaks. They're the, they're, they're the techno people. They come into your office and they have a jailbroken iPhone. And at home, they have a bunch of servers. They're active on World of Warcraft or Modern Warfare. They play video games. They're, their brains are detailed. They might have a peaked interest in a lot of different things. They might be conservative or liberal. It does not matter. They're scared communicators. They're techno people. And they have the hardest time. Why? Because their brain is very here. They're very uh, neocortex, which is high. They're not here. The base level brain that all lizards and lower creatures have. As a result, when they get a craving, when they get an urge, they follow it because they have to scratch that itch because that's not where their strength lies. They have to deal with this so that they can get back to the important stuff. Their inner child wants to do what they want to do only. And as a result, they either quit out of frustration because they get into a, a loop of cyclic fertility they say, or, or a futility. They say, well, then nothing really matters. What does it really matter if I, if I am faithful or not? And they become feudalists or they go to sleep and they sleep their whole day and they start taking to, to be out of hunger. They start just going to sleep, which is a bad idea. You shouldn't do that. And then when they fail, they just watch themselves on autopilot, pull into KFC and pig out because they're not connected. They don't know themselves. So this individual that I started talking about at the first of the presentation here, he was a high analytical type who was also a substance abuser, recovering substance abuser. And I literally had to tell him, 
sir, your life is on the line here. This success is not about you losing 30 pounds. It's about you uh, keeping your marriage. It's about you uh, not getting arrested. Uh, it's about you not uh, losing your life savings on uh, doing blow or something crazy like that. So you can see that these are the types. These are the types, by the way, in the media that get arrested because you find out they had child porn on their computer. They had some secret addiction because they have two lives running. They have the high life of productivity and then they have the low life of base desire. And their brain separates them because they're not compatible. So you have a functional alcoholic who comes to work and is very nice and functional and then they go home and they're a substance abuser. You see how that works. That's why they're the third least likely to succeed. And I have so many people who seek counseling because they don't know these things. They don't realize that you're going to have to set up safeguards. You're going to have to know yourself. You're going to have to double down on your efforts because it is literally a matter of life and death, your success. Okay, the last two categories are what you could say are positive. It's more likely they're going to succeed. Uh, the fourth is Interconnectors. These are the glad communicators. These are the relation, relationship-oriented people. Um, they're not techno nerds. They're people that want to connect with you. They want to. They're the life of the party. They're the ones that want the credit and the recognition. And when they go to work, if if you have a Zumba class, they're probably join. It's an optional Zumba class or meditation class. They're probably there. They're the guy also who uh, throws a party. And they are the ones with the beer in their hand that comes to the door and lets you in because they're social bugs. They love it. Now, the problem with these, these are pretty on safe ground in terms of their ability to fast and stay loyal. However, their big pitfall is when others eat. Because they're, they are connectors, they absorb the energy that's in the room. They go into a room with somebody who's angry or depressed and they, want to be, they become more or less angry or depressed. They're empathic. And so if somebody's hungry and brings food, they want to eat. Now, some of that's just normal. If somebody brings food, it, it's natural to want to eat, but they really want to eat because they start to question their resolve. Look, this is great Mexican food that somebody brought. I think I want to start another day. And they start rethinking their plans. Why? Because they're drawing their energy from the people that are around them. Now, earlier, we talked about those who are pushovers. We talked about low economic, high altruistic. Now put that in the context here. High glad is high individualistic. They're people who love to connect. They love to be the life of the party and they, they're high altruistic. So they love to connect and they love to sacrifice for others in return. Their, their economic might be medium uh, if they can get things done, but they're the people that convince themselves that something is good or bad based on what others believe and they don't know they do it. So your resolve has to be there. Your purpose has to be there. And then finally, there's my own category, the mad. Mads are the, the Captain Kirks, the, the results-driven people, the people who make a determination and follow through with it. I'm actually a mad scared, so I'm a little bit of an analytical too, but I'm also, I'm an angry analytical. I'm determined. But mads have a different set of problems. Their problems tend to be overdoing things, becoming extreme. And I'm a very extreme person. I'll go to one extreme and then the other. So results-oriented people can get things done, but they're also most likely to develop body image or eating disorders or something of that nature, which is the like the back-end uh, problem that comes with being assertive and becoming being alpha, if you will. But these are the categories. These are the main ones. If you are a mad communicator, you have to, it's the same as all of these. If you are glad, sad, or scared, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, what will come back to reality, what will bring you back to reality is that you have to know yourself. And your ability to perceive the world depends largely on knowing where you're coming from. That's not what you're taught. That's not what you hear. But we literally do not see the same world around us. We see a different world based on who we are. Know yourself and you will succeed.